lesson this morning is based on a, a motto that originated in the Reformation movement in Europe uh, in the 1500s, 1500s, 1600s, and was eventually uh, brought about or adopted by the American Restoration Movement. And of course, we are a part of that movement, uh, Churches of Christ. Um, so we have adopted that saying. It's called a peace saying. And it's uh, in matters of faith, unity. In matters of opinion, freedom or liberty. In all matters, love. And that's why it's a peace saying. Because if we're unified, um, we practice our liberty without <coughs> infringing on somebody else's rights, there will be love and hence peace. Um, so this motto was adopted and um, a man by the name of George Calixtos was a Lutheran priest from the, the 1600s uh, during the Reformation movement and um, he wanted to come up with a list of essentials. Um, Essentials of Faith, and he wrote this book called Four, Four Books uh, of True Christianity. So what we have done in the American Restoration Movement, where we say in matters of faith, unity, uh, in matters of opinion, freedom. Um, so what this means is, is that there are some essentials found in the book that we have to adhere to. And then there are some things God gives us liberty to make our own choices in. Now, a potential problem with that and what has and it has caused problems in the church throughout the ages is um, your matter of faith might be my matter of opinion and vice versa. So how do we reconcile those? And of course, the way we do that is going into the scripture and seeing what those essentials are. Um, above all, Jesus wanted his disciples to be unified to love one another. We see that throughout his time on earth uh, where Unity is a, is a key issue for him, uh, especially if we look at John 13, which I, I, I really feel passionate about this scripture and how it applies to us. In, <clears throat> excuse me, in John 13, where Jesus uh, washes the disciples' feet while they're grumbling, grumbling about who's going to be in charge and who's going to take over. He does out of love. He takes the, the issue in the form of a servant and he washed their feet. And because they were growing and complaining is why he did that. And then later he says, what I have done to you, do you to one another. And he says that love should supersede all. So, we can come up with what, what are the essentials of faith, the unity we need to be concerned with. Um, if a passage is like John 3.16 uh, is an essential. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but be saved. That is an essential. Uh, that is what we all believe in. And that's what we must all teach and profess to the world. Uh, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. In the Great Commission, what we call the Great Commission, Jesus says, Go ye therefore uh, out, making disciples of, of all nations, teaching them to uh, observe the things that I've done with you. Um, so, 
That's another essential, is that we share the gospel. Jesus commands us to do that. And that's what makes that an essential matter of faith. In 1 John, in chapters 4 and 5, um, the Apostle John sets out um, how to recognize somebody who lives by the essentials of faith that we see in John 3.16. And what the Apostle says is, uh, here's how you can recognize somebody. Uh, that they love one another, that they confess that Jesus is the Christ, and that they act in accordance with it. So I encourage us, uh, we're going to be studying on Wednesday night the epistles of John, and I look forward to, uh, to getting to, to that, those two chapters, four and five. So, those are some of the essentials of faith. There are others, and I'm sure we can come up with. But the intention of the restorers, uh, those in lead, who led the restoration movement, their, their purpose was to condense that list just to the basics of what it is to be a Christian. Belief, faith, love, Confession, baptism, those are essentials. Um, if we look at the, Cor the Corinthian church, Paul writes to them in 1 Corinthians. Uh, get your Bibles. You turn it over there to 1 Corinthians. When he wrote this letter, the Corinthian congregation was a young church. Uh, however, um, it had leadership, uh, it had a, a good membership, but um, a lot of problems arose because of disunity or fractions or uh, divisiveness among the church. And we see that as Paul admonishes them through, throughout <coughs> the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, our kids kids in the back probably can quote some of 1 Corinthians, especially 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 13. <coughs> the factions that Paul addresses is that the fact that Corinthians and Jews made up the congregation. So there was some strife there. Uh, being under the Roman Empire, there was a social order, a social status, that those who had money and power uh, would expect to be more respected than others. And uh, one of the ways this was uh, exemplified is in chapter 11, concerning the Lord's Supper. <coughs> Concerning the Lord's Supper, what was happening is the church was coming together at somebody's house uh, for the Agape Feast. And originally the Agape Feast was not only a regular meal, but it incorporated the Lord's Supper as well. And those of higher social status had their group, their fraction. And their problem was, is that they were hoarding the food because most of them probably provided it, uh, as well as the wine and the drink. They hoarded it, and they disrespected the poor among the congregation who had little, which included slaves, um, the extremely poor who relied on that agape feast every week uh, for a solid meal as well as to come together in unity to take the Lord's Supper which is what the Lord's Supper is all about. Uh, they also had 
issues with their miraculous spiritual gifts. And if you read chapters uh, 12 through 14 in 1 Corinthians, Paul addresses these misuse, the misuse of these spiritual gifts. Uh, and I'm talking about the miraculous ones, <coughs> which included tongues, or speaking foreign languages and interpreting it, um, miracles or healing, miracles of healing, um, prophecy, there were oracles there that prophesied. Those were miraculous gifts. And the problem we were having there with these gifts is that each one was claiming that their gift was the most important. So you had that those factions fighting against one another about what was the most important one. I can speak in tongues. Other guys can prophesy, which is more important. I think prophesying is. So um, I'm going to discredit what you what you think, or I'm going to lower it. Um, so those were some problems they were having with uh, spiritual gifts, and there were there were other problems. But in chapter 13, Paul summarizes what it means. Uh, for the church to come together in unity once again. It says these three, these th three things remain, faith, hope, and love. Say it with me. But the greatest of these is love. Love will be what unifies us in the essentials of the Christian faith. As far as <clears throat> matters of opinion, we see examples of this also uh, through scripture. The one that comes to mind most immediately to me is when Paul, during the second, his second missionary journey, uh, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark, who had bailed out on the first missionary duty, journey. So Saul, Paul says, no, we're not going to take him because he's not responsible and reliable. And Barnabas had the opposite opinion. But rather than have strife with one another or hatred, what did they do? They decided to part ways. And that was the matter of opinion between Paul and Barnabas. And there are others. But in matters of opinion, there should be liberty. Liberty. The great thing about Christ, the gospel, the message he left us is, um, he tells us the things that are important and what we must do. But he doesn't tell us how we have to do those things. Uh, should we sing two songs and then have a prayer and then communion or should we have communion first you know he doesn't tell us those type of things he leaves it up to church leaders local church leadership um, and we should have freedom in those matters and another example was a meat that was offered to idols in one place Paul says don't eat it if it becomes uh, offensive to a younger brother. But in other places he says, what is meat offered to idols? I can eat it. It's, it doesn't mean anything that it was offered to idols. It's meat and it's nutrition. Uh, so there's a matter of, of freedom in that area. But um, what, what we need to remember in this area, matters of freedom and opinion, if ours conflicts with someone, we need to take into mind Philippians 2, 1 through 4, which Caleb did such a fine job reading earlier this morning.
And then lastly, in all matters love, and once again, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is all about love. Um, Jesus was all about love. And he says, not only love those who love you, but love your enemies, right? Um, so in all matters, love each other. And Philippians 2, 1 through 4, we read, be willing to give up your freedom or your opinion. If something is so important to someone else that contradicts what you believe. In the entire chapter 2 of Philippians, he talks about this unity. Christ died for this unity. And then uh, also, Jesus' final prayer, or one of his final prayers, uh, was in the garden when he prayed for the unity of his disciples, that they love one another, that they stick together. In all matters, love. So those, um, those are the three issues we need to contend with in our faith. What is, uh, what is essential? What is a matter of faith? Uh, in matters of opinion, freedom. What are those areas where we can have some freedom to express our personality or the things that that are important to us. And then, in all matters, we are to love one another as Jesus contends in John 13 and Paul in 1 Corinthians 13. So, how do we do those things? That's what we need to be reflecting on this week. How can I be better unified with the church? How can I be better connected with others so that I, I'm willing to give up my rights to theirs? Um, so, yeah, those are some of the things let's think about this week. Um, but in all things, love. And even when we get heated in our differences, as many Christians do, um, love should be the underlying principle. <laughs> but when it gets heated, uh, this person I may think is wrong, but I still love them, right? And that's what Jesus saw. If you uh, have a need this morning of expression of faith uh, in baptism, or uh, if you have something you want to share with the congregation, now is the time to do that while we stand and sing.